166 million years after dinosaurs left a track of footprints, the longest set ever discovered in the world are found in an Oxfordshire quarry. Now, what about this? A set of dinosaur footprints stretching more than 200 metres has been found in a quarry in Oxfordshire. They were made 166 million years ago and are thought to be the longest set ever discovered anywhere in the world. Our science editor, Rebecca Morrell, has had exclusive access to the site. Hidden beneath a quiet patch of Oxfordshire countryside, the layers of a limestone quarry are revealing secrets from our prehistoric past. The extraordinary discovery has been buried deep under these rocks for 166 million years. But even the most delicate excavations can need something a bit more powerful to get going. With the rocks cleared, the footprints of giant dinosaurs emerge, dating to the Jurassic period. But there aren't just a few of them. This was a dinosaur superhighway. It's one of the biggest trackway sites in the world. This trackway is incredibly long, more than 100 footsteps stretching for 220 metres. And if you come down here, you can see how the dinosaur, as it stepped its foot down, it squelched up the mud in the front to create this ridge, so we know it was travelling in this direction. So you're literally standing in the footstep of a dinosaur. You know, we're seeing something and uncovering something that people have never seen before. Um, we're the first people to see these. And also, it's just a really great experience to work on something in the UK of this size and scale. It's so rare to find something this big where you can get that picture into this past world. Preserved by a perfect set of conditions, the footprints were made in mud, baked in the sun, then covered with a layer of sediment. I think this is our best footprint they were left by sauropod dinosaurs, huge, long-necked, four-legged, plant-eating beasts. They add to the hundreds of prints discovered at the site last year. We've got a right, we've got a left, but then we've got this strange thing here, and this looks to me like a forefoot or a hand imprint on the right, and it's far out from the track, so it's like the animal is leaning out and pausing for a moment and then carry on normally. It's so important to look at the way animals move freely uh, and naturally and tracks are the only way we can do that for dinosaurs. The footprints have now been analysed and the dinosaur that made them recreated. We can start to animate this uh, skeleton to make the feet hit the footfalls, hit the tracks where they should be. It kind of is a stroll, really, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's not moving particularly fast, two metres per second. It's about the same speed as a human would walk quickly. And so it looks like it's paused, maybe looked behind it, and then kept moving along in this direction. All the prints at the site were made over a matter of weeks. The environment was very different back then. Oxfordshire was covered by a shallow sea. And it wasn't just a time of giants. So we're trying to understand more about the other animals that were living when the dinosaurs were here. And we found this little sea urchin. It's got a spine that's broken off, but otherwise it's an almost complete little tiny sea urchin. And that's really important for us because it tells us that these were marine conditions in open seawater before the dinosaurs came and walked here. You can start to sort of tell the story, to kind of paint a picture of what it was like. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Something like a lagoon or setting, a bit like the Florida Keys or the Bahamas today, with um, open ocean over that side of us and islands behind us. It's rare to find a site like this, with different trackways crisscrossing the quarry. Dinosaurs dominated the earth for millions of years. Even now, we can find echoes of their lost world in the footprints they left behind. Rebecca Morrell, BBC News, Oxfordshire. Absolutely fascinating, isn't it? Well, we... We've decided in a very technical way that that dinosaur had a very, very long neck and a very, very small, disappointingly small head. You can't judge a dinosaur. Yeah. We just I've, were. I've just got severe <laughs> neck envy no, for someone stop. with no neck whatsoever. You do have we, a neck, We're going to speak Look, right to there. Professor Falking, who you saw in that piece uh, a bit later on the programme and explain a bit more. It's... Um, Absolutely unbelievable pictures yeah. and the 
and 3D the, stuff. Yeah. The longest stretch of footprints ever found in the world. It's incredible. Well, we follow the trail and we're joined <laughs> now by paleobiologist Professor Peter Falkingham. Good morning to Good you. Good morning. Hi. And you've been involved in this. You've been on the site. Um, tell us about this dinosaur. <laughs> who are they? <laughs> well, that's one of the big questions is who is the track maker who made these tracks? Um, we know it's a sauropod, one of the big long neck dinosaurs. We know that from the shape of the footprints. Um, and it just so happens we have material from a sauropod from Oxfordshire, from about the same age, Middle Jurassic, uh, called Cetiosaurus. So that, that makes it the most likely track maker, Cetiosaurus. And what more do you know about that dinosaur and why it might have been there? Yeah, so, so what more we know about it, we know its size. And we know its size because there's a rule of thumb that hip height is about four times foot length. And these tracks are nearly a metre long. So that means this thing had a four metre hip height. So its knees would be at our head level. Uh, that puts it about 15, 16 metres long. Um, huge dinosaur. Uh, and we know that this thing was walking around at sort of by the edge of a lagoon, something where there's this big, soft, deep mud. We find small shelly fossils in there as well that indicates it was a marine environment. Um, so we actually get quite a lot about the track maker from the tracks. I think the way it was found by this farm worker in a tractor who hits one and then another and then <laughs> thinks this might be a track, he was clearly super excited. But I can tell you're super excited oh, yeah. by this. How much, how much difference does this discovery make? Oh, it gives us a, a, a whole bunch of information. Um, it's not necessarily that anything's brand new and exciting, but what we get from these really long trackways that are so rare is we get these repeated measures and the ability to, to really... Um, understand what the animal is doing from step cycle to step cycle. And do we learn any more about how many more of them there might have been? Are you worried, Sal? <laughs> <laughs> well, I wasn't until you put that thought in my head. <laughs> so it's not a super dense track site. We've got maybe four or five trackways on this surface. We've been excavating for a few years now. And tracks were found at the, at the quarry in the late 90s, early 2000s. And then we restarted again in 22 and again in 24 and again this year. And it's not like the whole surface is covered in tracks. This area that we're looking at now is maybe four or five sauropod trackways, possibly a theropod trackway running through that. That's the meat-eating dinosaurs like T-Rex. We see that the really careful excavation work <laughs> that's going on here and it's, it's chisels and trowels and delicately brushing away at the surface. But they also had to carry out controlled explosions, didn't oh, yeah. they, to try and get to the areas concerned. <laughs> That comes with some risks, right? Because you could, you could damage the footprints. <laughs> yeah, so, the, the, I mean, the quarry uh, uh, people are absolute professionals. They know what they're doing. So they set up a, a safety bund uh, in the area so nobody gets hit. They do this massive explosion, and all the, all the rocks stay within that safety area. They're very good. Um, you say carefully excavating, but the, uh, the infill of the tracks was like concrete because we had such a hard, uh, hot, dry summer. So we were wailing on those rocks with hammers and chisels to really try and get it out. Hard work. Um, we did see in the video there, there was one end where the trucks hadn't been driving over the tracks, and there we could get the overlying sediment out with an industrial pressure washer, which was kind of fun oh, to wow. use. So we have on the big screen behind us, we have a, an idea of what the dinosaur might look like. I think we can see it in a moment. There we go. Yeah. Very, 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 very long neck. Very, very small head. Yeah. Therefore, maybe small brain. Well... It's all relative. Okay. The head is still bigger than our heads. Okay. <laughs> it's just on a very long neck on a very big body. <laughs> um, and there are certainly questions about does absolute brain size matter or relative brain size? It, it still had enough brain for it to, to function as an animal for a lot longer than humans have done. And you specialise in, in the movement, the motion right. of dinosaurs, don't you? So, so what have you learned about from the footprints? How, how can you establish how it... How it moves. Do you like that move? Yeah. Very good. <laughs> dinosaur, dinosaur dancing. <clears throat> so there, there's, there's a, a famous equation that, that you can calculate speed from footprints. Uh, kind of. Okay. Uh, if you think if you run on a beach versus if you walk on a beach, when you're running, your strides are bigger. And so by measuring foot length and stride length, you can get an idea of how fast the animal was going. This thing wasn't moving particularly fast, maybe two metres per second. Um, but we can also get the footfall timings because of the way that the hind foot smushes into the front foot footprints. Oh. So the, the front foot will leave an impression and then the front foot will leave it as the hind foot smushes into the mud, pushing the mud into the front foot impression. And that gives us some real clues about the timing of the footfalls that we wouldn't otherwise get. Um, what was it eating? Plants. 
plants, although what it was eating here, I don't know, because this is, we don't find fossil plants here. This is a lagoonal setting. Maybe it's just moving from one area to another, uh, or maybe there is some aspect of them feeding in these areas that we don't know about yet. And we know this track has been found, and we know how long it is. Do we think there could there be other tracks there or oh, yeah. parallel? Yeah, absolutely. And this track definitely goes on further. So at one end, it runs into the cliff, and at the other end, it ran under the main road where all the big trucks were going, which we couldn't work on for obvious reasons. So this, this trackway is almost certainly much, much longer. And the, the quarry as a whole is maybe two, three kilometres across since the early excavations of the 90s. Uh, so, yeah, there's absolutely more there. Absolutely amazing. Peter, thank you very much indeed for thank coming. Thank you very much. If you see some big muddy footprints out there, they belong to John Watson, our sports <laughs> presenter, because uh, it's raining. But thank you very much indeed. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Cheers.